<clears throat> Good Arab Shabbos, everyone. This week's Parsha is that of Bamidbar. As we know, Bamidbar invariably precedes the Yontif of Shavuos. Shavuos will be on uh, Monday night and tu- um, Tuesday night and Wednesday of the coming week. Bamidbar consists mostly of the census of Kla Yisrael. Vaishra Abenu is instructed by Hashem to take a census of all of the males from the age of 20 years old and above. And then Klai Yisrael, once we determine this, they are organized into their tribes and the tribes into various groups in which they encamp and surround the focal point, which is the temple where the divine presence dwells. This is primarily most of the Pasha. What exactly is the connection between Parshas Bamidbar and the Yontif of Shavuos? In addition, Bamidbar follows last week's Parsha B'chukaisai. B'chukaisai primarily consists of the Teichacha, the main section of B'chukaisai is the Teichacha, the words of rebuke that Moshe Rabbeinu presented to Klai Yisrael when we act casually with God, we don't take his word seriously, we don't study his Torah, we don't fulfill his mitzvahs, we are arrogant towards those who do observe God's mitzvahs, we despise those who fulfill his mitzvahs, we deny the authenticity of the Torah, and even those who deny the existence of God. There are such individuals and Hashem says that when these individuals are found amongst Kla Yisrael to too great a degree, and they are misleading the rest, Hashem will allow our enemies to come upon us and drive us from our land, and there are horrific descriptions of suffering. This is the Teichacha. This Teichacha, this Parsha, what connection does that have with the census of Klal Yisrael? In addition, B'chu Kaisai, the last mitzvahs deal with what's called Maisa Behema. Maisa Behema means that in Israel, when a man has a flock of sheep or cattle, the newborn of that year, so they are placed in a corral and they go one by one, and the tenth one is sacred to be brought as an offering. And the Torah tells us, this tenth one we should not examine and make, we shouldn't distinguish if it's good, robust, healthy, or if it's blemished. And the Renu, and should it come out to be a blemished animal, which is not acceptable to be placed on the altar of Hashem, we cannot substitute. What exactly is the connection of this mitzvah of Maisa Behema? to the census of Klal Yisrael. What is, what is the connection over here? The Ramban tells us first and foremost that this was not just an ordinary census to know how many men there would be, but rather the Ramban tells us this was to reveal the excellence of Klal Yisrael. And each and every member of Klal Yisrael, 20 and over, was brought before Moshe and Aharon and the leaders of the tribes. And they would introduce themselves. They would say, this is my name, this is my father, this is my grandfather, I am from this tribe. And here they would have the opportunity to be in the presence of Aharon, Ramban says, who is the Kodesh Hashem, the sacred one of God, the prototype, of Kohen, the original Kohen Godel, every Kohen to this day is a descendant of Aaron. The Yoy of Shalom, the Raid of Shalom, the one who loves peace and lived to pursue peace and bring peace. This holy, sacred individual, every member, 20 years old, had the opportunity to introduce themselves to Aaron and to Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, the Av Hanavim the father of all prophets, meaning that the prophecy of Moshe was like none other, no one who preceded, no one who will ever follow. Moshe Rabbeinu's clarity and perception of the divine is unrivaled. And Moshe Rabbeinu, 
He who stood on Sinai 40 days, 40 nights without food, without water. He who studied Torah from God. He who received all the Torah that emanated from God himself. Amesha Rabbeinu. We're standing in his presence. And the Ramban says, we weren't just introducing ourselves. We received the bracha. Could you imagine that? Getting a bracha from Moshe Rabbeinu, standing in his presence and getting a bracha. Moshe would look at us and see us and he would give us a bracha. What, what would he see within us that we deserve a bracha? Moshe Rabbeinu sees something. Aaron Akayan sees something. This wasn't just a census. Oh, yes, we were able to determine exactly how many men there were. There's no question. But that wasn't the entire purpose. The purpose was Klai Yisrael would receive a bracha. This was the census. So it's not just a simple calculation. The Sefer is nine of Torah. I believe that's the Sefer I saw it. He says that this mitzvah, there's a connection between the mitzvah of Meiser Behema, the tithing of the 10th animal, the newborn animal, and the census of Klal Yisrael, the calculation. What is that? He says, just as we find that by this mitzvah of the 10th animal, the Torah is very specific. The one that comes out as number 10, don't, don't try to organize, oh, let this healthy looking, wonderful, robust, full animal, let this one come out. No, let them come by themselves. Don't examine, don't manipulate, and don't substitute. Whichever one comes, that's the one that is imbued with the sanctity can't be brought, if it has a blemish, can't be brought on the altar, but nevertheless, it still has an element of sanctity of being the tenth one called Meiser Behema, the tenth animal of the newborn. And it makes no difference if we see an external blemish. This, the Oznaim Lutera says, that's the connection. When the Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron and the Nesim when Klai Yisrael came before them and they were calculating the amount, the number, and Moshe Rabbeinu saw each member of Klai Yisrael, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't look at the chitzenius, the external. He didn't look and see this person. What kind of a person are they? Is this one worthy of a bracha? Is this one worthy of Aaron Akoyan, the holy sacred Aaron, that he should gaze upon him? and be filled with such love and bestow this love on them. Maybe this individual, maybe we can see that this person, maybe there are a couple of character traits that need to be improved. Maybe there are some flaws in the individual's behavior. This was not taken into account because Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron, they saw beyond the external. They saw the depth. They saw the neshama. They saw the soul of Klal Yisrael. Yes, there's an evil inclination that distracts us, and sometimes maybe we fall victim and we don't behave the way we should, but that doesn't define us. That's not who we are. Moshe Rabbeinu saw who we are. Aaron Akain understood what we are. He saw us for being truly the B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, descendants of Avram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rifi, Yaakov, Rachel, and Leah. He saw and knew exactly the sanctity and the capability. And even if we did have flaws in our character, even if there were those of us who had transgression, we can always remove it. Moshe's and Aaron, they saw that we were capable of tshuva returning to Hashem. And who knows if just being in the presence of these two angelic human beings, if that wasn't enough to inspire us, that we should want to return to Hashem and cleanse our spirit and remove and delete the stench of whatever transgression we might have done. Such is the nature and the essence of Klal Yisrael. That's what Moshe and Aaron saw. That's what this census was all about. 
the Torah tells us that there can be individuals who unfortunately have fallen so far away from their faith, from the proper path. Not only do they not observe, not only do they not respect, but they detest others who do, and they didn't think they can even deny the authenticity of the Torah being divine. They can even deny the existence of God in order to justify their existence out of their frustration, their guilt, their anger, their disappointment in themselves. And nevertheless, the Torah says these people will be sent into exile. We will be exiled as a result of not being able to correct and remove this blemish from upon us, from our people. But what does it say? It says, <speaking in Hebrew> The Goyal, the Redeemer, Mashiach, is going to come to Tzion, to Zion, to Yerushalayim, to Israel, and he will lead us back. That means even though we're in Golis, we're in exile. Why are we in exile? because these blemishes are still found amongst us. Nevertheless, we are not rejected. Despite our blemish, we are like the animal, which is tithe the tenth, but it's got a blemish. That's okay. It's got a blemish. It's still sacred because this blemish that exists with us can be and will be removed. Maybe God should substitute for us. Look how many are blemished. Look how many have gone astray. Look how many who are distant from their faith. They will never be substituted for. That's the connection of the teichacha, the mitzvah of the tenth animal, and this census of Kla Yisrael. We are like that animal, that tenth animal. We will never be substituted for. And should there be a blemish, that's not who we are. Who we are are individuals worthy of being in the presence of Moshe and Aaron and the Nisim and receiving the blessings, these brachas. And that's why this Pasha Bamidbar falls before Shavuos. We might think, what is Shavuos? We receive the Torah. Wonderful. We didn't just receive it in the past. It refers to God's constant love and continuous bestowing upon us his blessing of giving us his Torah, which means the purpose for the existence of the entire universe. We were chosen. We are chosen. We are still chosen. We still have this unique relationship. But what about the blemishes that we have? What about our flaws and our faults? Yes, we have them. But that's not who and what we are. That's like a person who's traveling through the desert and gets sand all over himself. Hasn't changed who he is. He just needs to remove the sand. But we are still worthy of coming before the king and receiving his gift. We'll just clean ourselves off brush off the sand, polish the shoes. And this way we're able to stand before God on Shavuos and re-experience being in the presence of Sinai and receiving God's Torah. May the Almighty enable us to recognize how precious we are in the eyes of Hashem and to truly appreciate the magnificent gift that he has given us, his Torah, the portal to eternity and to recognize Hashem's boundless love. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish. Have a wonderful